Hello, and welcome to The Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and The Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who have had an association with Oshkosh or the surrounding Fox Cities area. How are you guys doing out there? Um, Hope everybody is doing good. Once again, we are up early on a Saturday morning, getting ready to make an amazing episode. Um, Super excited about what's in store. Got really good. Got a really great guest uh, this week. Um, You know what? But you know, I always got to, I got to let a few things off my mind before we really, really jump into things. Um, What is going on with our weather? Once again, Wisconsin is duping us. So I feel like earlier this week, we had some days and it was, it was, you know, it was a little cold. It was a little cold. And then all of a sudden, like today, I hear we're going to have something like 47 degrees. And you know what's the worst? <laughs> My wife has been uh, totally complaining about this is, you know, you take like the nice days and you go get your car washed. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah. Because it's just atrocious. And then all of a sudden it starts sleeting raining hailing whatever it's going to do for wisconsin weather so that's my that's my uh initial start off gripe and we are going to get ready to jump in here in a second um oop, and we're gonna jump in because we are having soundboard problems so <laughs> this this is what happens sometimes um our guest this week, and you know what's you know what I'm gonna say. Once again, I don't know how this always happens. Um, we've got an amazing, amazing guest. Um, and this week's guest is Stephanie Carlin. Stephanie, how are you doing over there? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Oh no, I'm super excited. Um, you ready uh, you ready to jump in? I'm ready to jump in. Fabulous. Okay, um, Stephanie, can you please tell us a little something about yourself and uh, what's your connection to the cash? Sure. Uh, I'm going to start with a confession. This is my very first podcast. I have never done a podcast before. Whoa. So you, and, you, and you chose us? And I chose you. Yeah. I think, I, it, I, I think it was a smart choice. Yeah. I, <laughs> I've listened to your podcasts and they're amazing. Uh, so my connection to the Kosh is my husband and I moved here 20 years ago from Houston, Texas. Whoa. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. That, how much of a shock was that? Oh, it was a huge shock. When we first moved here, we were so excited to go to Kohl's and get hats and gloves and scarves and mittens. And we thought it was going to be so fun to have winter. Yeah, that quickly wore off pretty quickly. And it ended up being the worst winter in history, our first winter here. Oh. Tons of snow. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> but it's actually, I tell people, it's actually exactly the same weather, just opposite extremes, right? So in Houston, you start your car and you let the AC run for a few minutes. And here you start your car and you let the heat run for a few minutes, you know, just opposite extremes. You know what? I never thought about that. So yeah, you, you got to cool down your car if you're in like crazy, crazy hot weather. Right. And you don't go out in the summer and here you don't go out much in the winter. So no, that's pretty true. Yeah. So we had our choice between, uh, my husband got a job at UWO and his other job offer was in Arkansas. And when we came here to Oshkosh, we just fell in love with the city. I mean, it's a beautiful city and you've got the water, you've got the university. And we thought this would be a great place to raise a family. And that was 20 years ago. And years. no regrets. I love it here. The Kosh is cool. Yes, and it I, is. And, and, I, and I could see that. Like, you come here and, you know, I fell in love with the pace of life. Yes, like it just had a really, you know, coming coming from uh, Milwaukee, it just had a wonderful, wonderful pace of life that I was just like, oh, this is nice. And, and secretly traffic. Um, right. I'm not a big traffic person. No, there's no traffic here. None. Yeah. That's kind of fabulous. I know. We take a lot of road trips with our family. And when they were little, they would say we would get stuck in traffic in Philly or somewhere. And they'd be like, why are all these cars not moving? They've never seen traffic before. This is traffic, you guys. Oh, that's crazy. It is crazy. Okay. Um, Where are you originally from? 
Colorado. I was what I know. I was raised in Colorado, which is a beautiful state, and I still have family that lives there, so we get to go back and visit quite often. I had something about me when I was 18. I just felt like Colorado was not cool, and I had to go explore some other places, so I decided to go to the, wait for it, thriving metropolis of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Amish country. <laughs> Amish country. <laughs> Amish country from Colorado. But I went to school there at Franklin and Marshall, and that's where I ended up meeting my husband. So everything worked out as it should. Okay. That's, that's, I like that. Okay. And, um, well, that's change. You've been a few places. I have. What's your, what's your favorite thing? Well, uh, from another place uh, outside of the cash, which what's the things that you miss from the other places? Um, you know, I lived in a lot of big cities before I moved here. I lived in Philly for a while. I lived in Washington, D.C. for a while and Houston. And I, I honestly don't miss anything from those cities. Um, I like it here better because, like you said, no traffic. I, I did not like the politics of some of the areas that, you know, living in D.C. where everything becomes politicized. I was like, I'm not Ooh. staying here. I only lived there for two years. Okay. But, um, I, there, okay, I can't think of one thing. Food, restaurants. I love Indian food. I love Korean food. I love Thai food. And there's not a lot of that around here. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, we got a few places, but um, oh. not, not you know, I'm yeah. not compared to like a city. Right. India Darbar in um, Appleton is my favorite Indian food oh. restaurant ever. And I wish it was a little closer, but, you know, it's just a short drive away. Yeah, it's not it's not that far. Yeah. I always giggle um, when we talk about, like, living here and driving somewhere like Menina Menasha it and is. Appleton as if it's far. Because, you know, no. in, in Milwaukee, if you drive 20 minutes, you don't even fully get to another side of Milwaukee. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> I know. It's so true. And I used to commute 40 when I was in Houston, right before I used to commute 40 minutes a day. And, you know, now I think, oh, 20 minutes away to Nina. That's so far. (laughs) It's not far. It's not far. It's not far. Oh, I think that I think that happens to all of us and it gets worse the longer you live here. It is exactly true. You know, you've lived here for a long time when you think it's too far to go to Nina. Okay. Um, Children? Yes, I've got three children, um, uh, 19, 18, and 15. Whoa. I know, yeah. Mm, one right. in college, one about to graduate, and one that's a freshman at West High School. You're in the thick of it. I am in the thick of it, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's serious business. Yeah, huh. yeah. Uh, there's an expression that I firmly believe in, and it says, you can have a good day with your teenager, or you can ask them to wear a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't have both. You can't have both. <laughs> no. no, all right. That, you know, I've never thought about that. Right. Uh, but there's probably some truth in that one. Right. Yeah. Now, that, and what is up with kids not wanting to wear a coat? I don't know. I it don't ain't know. cool. And and they wear shorts in the freezing cold, and then they say they're cold, and I'm like, you're wearing shorts. You know. And what I'm going to say is, my daughter was not that bad about it. Um, Instead, my thing when she was coming up was the holy jeans. Oh yeah, I couldn't do that. I was just like, seriously. Mm. So you're you're it's cold, like freezing out, and you're putting on these jeans that have ridiculous ventilation in them, and doesn't that just kind of defeat the point of putting on jeans in yeah. cold weather? Yeah. Yeah, I think that trend's passed now, though, right? <clears throat> I, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and if my daughter is listening, you're getting old. I just like to tell her that every yeah, once yeah, yeah. in a while. <laughs> well, now it's all about the mom jeans, which I also oh. don't understand. That's a yeah. brand. They're That's, called mom jeans. There's a brand called mom jeans? It is called mom jeans. Bruh. <laughs> what is the, and, and wait, and kids want to wear those? Yes. It, I, my daughter wanted me to spend $60 on a pair of them. Bruh. <laughs> I have no words. I know. That just messed me all up. <laughs> me too. Who wants to buy you? So, so that's become cool. Like That's become cool. 
And I, do, you, do you remember that skit from, this is really aging me, from Saturday Night Live where they had the mom jeans and they were all making fun of them? Yes. That's exactly what they are wearing these days, mom jeans. Now uh, you're gonna I, have to Google it after I, we're done. I'm 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 totally gonna have to <laughs> dig in on that because I don't even know what to do with that. That's like crazy. <laughs> all right, and just so we all know that um, Bo- Bosco the podcast dog has definitely made his presence. He is he is over here trying to solicit belly rubs in the middle of the show, which He's is what adorable. is what he does. Um, you ready to jump into the first segment? I sure am. Okay. The first segment is what in the world is going on with? This is where you start off with the phrase, what in the world is going on? And tell us what's on your mind. What is going on with Russia and Ukraine? I I just, it's a crazy situation. I I don't know how to respond. I don't know what it means. Yeah. I, I can't, I don't get an unsolicited war. I don't either. Like, they didn't do anything to them. Right. Like, it's not like there was a problem. Usually, if yeah. you're going to go into war. Right. There's a problem. Correct. Like, somebody did something to somebody. Exactly. But to just say, we're going to we're gonna do this, I don't, I, I, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that either. And um, the whole oligarch thing. That mm. now they're 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 banning oligarchs. I think a lot of people had never even heard the word oligarchs. So we're we're punishing Putin's friends that are rich and telling them they can't come to the United States. I don't think they care about coming to the United States. What's that going to do? Well, <laughs> well, I think we are blocking their money though. Yeah, we are. You know, Hitt- so. hitting them where it hurts. Yeah. So yeah, and no, I don't think they. Well, maybe they might care because oligarchs own things here. That's true. Right. And so there's access to things that they're not getting that they've spent money on to own here. Right. Maybe. Right. I don't know. I'm with you on that. That is a good what in the world is going on with because I I just war is such a horrible thing. It is. and And I feel like it's it's scary for my kids. They keep you know, they haven't seen war in their lifetime. So they're wondering what's going on, what it means, you know, and I don't know what to tell them. Doesn't I, make sense. I think it's going to backfire. I hope so. Um, and the reason I say that is because the difference is, is I believe you can get away with a lot of things until you visually see it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that is the thing that changed, that, that continuously changes history. Like, it's one thing to hear about atrocities. It's another thing when you see atrocities. Right. Um, It's what I think happened, like, even to move civil rights. Um, It's one thing to hear about um, fire hoses and dogs, but then when it comes across your TV, new technology, it hits different. And I think the pictures of this war or in the videos of this war and, and the voice of the people that it's affecting, you can't. They're not going to be able to stop that. You can't stop the transmission of that. Mm -mm. And it's going to get around. And as those horrors are televised, more and more countries are going to feel some kind of way about it. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. All right. My what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with distracted driving. Now. There's a story. Okay. Yes, it's a serious story. Well, it's not serious. It's a hilarious story, but okay. So, um, you know, I got to drive to Appleton every morning, and I'm driving to Appleton, and I'm watching this car kind of like go fast, slow, swerve a little, right? But it wasn't like something where I thought, okay, um, something, you know, like they're impaired or something like that, right? And so I, I really kind of, I get on the side and I kind of start pulling up and you know what it is? What? They're digging in their nose, like oh, deep, dear. like oh. deep into oh. it. Oh, like, and I was just like, whoa. Okay. Like to the point, like you're, you're bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, like he's swerving. He's swerving. Cause whatever he's going for. He's in there. He's, he's in, in there. there. <laughs> <laughs> bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I just gave you the uh, yeah. uh, an atrocious visual. Yeah, yeah. But it is what it is. It and is I was just like, is. bro, can you hold off on that? Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I have a story about distracted driving. Uh, my I have to drive my son. He goes to school in Minneapolis. And it's an easy drive from here to Minneapolis. Just is straight it? out. Yeah. And it's very relaxing. And, and, uh, <laughs> and I drove them home. And my son, when we, he said it, he called it the most terrifying uh, drive of his life. And mom can never drive him home again. And he said... First of all, she was watching TV. <laughs> I said, no, I wasn't. You know, your sister had on Grey's Anatomy, and I was just listening through the aux. And he said, and Dad, she was also flossing. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> and I said, but there, were, there was no traffic. And, you know, I just flossed for a little bit. And then my, my husband said, I'm sorry, you're not. I, I'm with the kids on this. You cannot floss while driving. You can't floss while driving. You cannot floss while driving. <laughs> that's, that's a, you know, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that's, it's, it's, a, it's a bad scene. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's distracted driving. <laughs> that's distracted driving. Because, you know, flossing, it takes work. It does. It you takes know, two hands. It ta- especially if you're back in the molars. Correct. You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. All right. I like that. That is fabulous. Okay. Um, next segment, word associations. This is where you say a word and you tell us what comes to mind. Okay. All right. We always start off with food. I don't like food. Isn't what? that weird? What? I, I don't even know I what to know, do with that. I know. I know. I am not a foodie. I'm one of those people that has to be reminded to eat sometimes. I like candy. I could oh. live on candy, Twizzlers, M&Ms, anything with sugar. Mm-mm. But when it comes to food, my, you know, my kids are always like, what's your favorite food? I'm like, I don't I don't really have one. I I don't like pizza. I don't I don't like the tr- I don't like hamburgers. I don't like the traditional things. I'm really weird about that. Okay. Uh what's the favorite candy? Oh, the favorite candy? Well, there's two categories. If you're going chocolate or candy, like chocolate's got to be Reese's peanut butter cups. Otherwise, it's like Twizzlers, Smarties, um nerds. I love nerds. Ooh. So, Halloween is basically my favorite holiday. Um, and it's because my kids do not like candy. Who has kids that don't like candy? They give me all their candy. Of course, now they're too old, but back in the days. You got all the candy. I got all the candy. And this year, because they wouldn't go trick-or-treating with me, this is really sad, actually. I dressed the dogs up and went trick-or-treating with the dogs <laughs> just to get candy. Did it work out? It worked out great. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Actually, you probably got more candy. Well, I had Bruce dressed up. Uh, they were they were going to the prom. Bruce mm. had on a little tux, and Betty had on a nice pink dress and looked like a little ballerina. <laughs> nice. I love that you broke candy up into two categories, which tells me a lot about you because chocolate gets its own. Um, it is. It's its own category. <laughs> So in my house and um, my wife, since she she's not as bad as she used to be, mm-hmm. but there was this time and it, we're talking years, years where there was candy in our house, but I didn't know where it was coming from. Mm-hmm. We were probably living here for probably five years before I found out my wife had a candy drawer. Really? Yeah, stacked full. I'm taking notes right now on that. Actually, right. I had no clue. No clue that this existed. Now, I think my daughter knew. That's a great idea. But neither one of them were telling me. And I just happened to write. And you know how kitchens work, right? There's drawers for everything. Mm -hmm. But if you don't really need certain, you might not ever go into a drawer if all the things you need are in different drawers. Right. And so this was a drawer that I just, I didn't know about. And one day I, I ran across and I was like, what is this? Wow. Yeah. That was an exciting day, right? No, they were holding out. I was mad. (laughs) (laughs) They were making me feel some kind of way. (laughs) Feeling left out. I was left out. But do you like candy? Um, I'm, I go through phases. Um, I am a Reese's peanut butter cup fiend. Yeah. But I feel like people fall into two categories. You are either, you lean towards salt 
or you lean towards sugar. Right. Right. I agree. And so I'm a petite potato chip person. Okay. And I inherited that from my mother. Uh, she is a potato chip fiend, un- undenied. It is it, 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 always. Yeah. Like, I remember potato chips from early, early ages. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of fall in that category myself. Yeah. my hus- I would say my husband's a potato chip, too. He doesn't really like candy either. Yeah. But, but I do. I What I've found is that my tastes have uh, changed as I am getting older, and now I crave sweets, like, at, like, 8.30 at night. Mm. Gotta have it. Yep. It's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Cocktail or beer? Well, I'm not a huge drinker, and... In fact, we had, we went several years where we didn't store any alcohol in the house because we had three teenagers and and (laughs) (laughs) And so we just, we decided we didn't want to have to worry about that. So we just had absolutely no alcohol in the house. But at some point during the pandemic, I discovered White Claws. Oh. Yeah. And so that's kind of my drink of choice. I can't drink wine. I can't drink hard liquor. I can't drink beer. But... My drink of choice is White Claw right now. But again, like I'm not a huge drinker, just kind of social. But if I go somewhere and they don't have White Claws, this is really sad. I won't drink anything because I'm done. Like I just, the hard liquor cannot. I'm too old. I can't. None of it. No, I can't do vodka. I can't do wine. Oh my goodness. Red wine is the worst. I, I feel you. Yeah, it's a sign of getting old. Your body can't to- tolerate drinks like it used to. Uh, this is true. It hits it hits the body very differently. Yeah. I giggle about White Claws because you know what White Claws are to me? White Claws are the 2020 version of Zima to me. They are. <laughs> they totally are. In fact, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit I like them. Like it's, oh. you know, it's the easy drink. There's not much alcohol to them. There's nothing to them. And uh, I ordered once somewhere we I think we were in Vegas and they said there is no law when you're on the claw <laughs> what <laughs> I'm like I'm just having one all right so we're fine uh, somebody's gonna quote that somebody's and, gonna quote that and I feel like that needs to be a t-shirt okay that's kind of fabulous I think that that's true yeah. uh streaming streaming uh, I was going to say, I was joking that I finished Netflix during the pandemic. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> I don't uh, think you're the only one. <laughs> right? Yeah. But uh, uh, I stream, I'm, I am addicted to Ozark. When the, the ne- last season of Ozark came out, I was so happy. And The Crown. Those are two things that I binged on during the pandemic. Really good shows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what's the crown about? Because I, I can't say that I've uh, watched that one or really heard much about it. Uh, it's about Queen Elizabeth. And the, mm. yeah, it starts out when she is just inheriting the throne. And it's, you know, who knows how much of it is fact versus fiction. But there is a lot of, they spend a lot of time making it as historically accurate as possible. And I'm a, I'm a royalist. I love following the royal family. I know. It's embarrassing. I can't help it. My husband goes to London um, almost every year with students, and I've tagged along, along a few times and toured Buckingham Palace Ooh. and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I like following the royal family. And this kind of brings them into your home in a, in a light that makes that humanizes them, right? Right. So I highly recommend it if you like Queen Elizabeth. Um. You know, I don't know how to feel about the royal family. Yeah. It's one of those things. Are you one of those people that were up like at 2 a.m. to watch the wedding? I was not up at 2 a.m., but yes, I did watch the entire thing from start to finish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just not quite sure what to make of the royal family. I mean, there was an interest there. I was uh, particularly interested when they, this last wedding. Yeah. Um, just because of some of the dynamics that were going on within it. Yeah. Um, but... Outside of that, I do find the queen kind of fascinating. Yeah. Because she, she's kind of gangster. She is. You know. She, I admire her. Yeah. Like, that's a, she's, she's strength and leadership. Exactly. And you, and I like that she's, she's never been politicized. You have no idea how she feels about, you know, she's neutral. She always takes the high road. She's, you know, she's just, she's the bomb. Yeah. 
you're right. I never thought about it from that that point of view, but you're you are right. I don't think I've ever heard a political stance from her. Mm-mm. And you never will, I don't think. I think that's her she serves all people and she never wants to say anything that would alienate her from a group or you know, a country or anything like that. So it's hard to do. We should take some notes. Right. 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 Yeah. Shop local. Farmer's Market, downtown. Everything you need is downtown. And when we first moved here, downtown was pretty dismal. Um, There were a lot of clothes shops. And I don't know when you moved here, but I'm talking like 2000-ish. And there wasn't a lot going on downtown. And so to see what it's become now is exciting to me. I mean, it is a cool place to be if you do the wine walks or the first Fridays or the gallery walks. And, and then I love, I love our farmer's market downtown too. I go almost every day in the summer. I love the farmer's market. I was here, I was here in the early nineties. And, um, so I felt like downtown has, when I was first came here, downtown actually had a few things. And the mall was still even open. Um, and the mall used to even have an arcade. Wow. wow. Um, and then, like, if things started, like, closing, and you're right, it kind of felt like things kind of dried up. And then this is the revival, and I do really like the direction that our downtown is going. So that's really good. Um, planning by, by our city leadership. Shout out to city mm-hmm. leadership. Big time. And I like that we just wrapped all the utility boxes and they're nice and colorful. And there's just always something going on downtown, really. And we have great restaurants down there, Gardena's, Ruby Owl, and coffee shops, Planet Perk, New Moon. I mean, everything you need is downtown, really. It really is. I, I've got a great love Um but I'm not going to lie right now, um, me and Appleton <laughs> College Ave, we're like, we're tight. Yeah. I'm feeling that downtown. And yeah. I'm hoping we we continue to transform and head towards a direction of that because there's a really warm feeling down there. And Agree. it's a really inclusive feeling. Agree. Yes, yes. And we still have a lot of um, places that need businesses. There's some empty buildings downtown right now. So yes. there's opportunity for people to come in and start something new. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see an ethnic restaurant downtown. Oh, yeah. That would be fabulous. Yeah. Okay. Um, pets. Pets. Well, I love your dog. Oh. Totally cute. <laughs> and uh, we have two dogs, Betty and Bruce. And I did not, I didn't grow up with dogs. So I just got my first dog uh, four years ago. Oh. And I did not like Betty at all. Betty and I did not get along. And so two years after we got Betty... The, the breeder that sold us Betty said, hey, Betty's mom had another litter. Would Betty like um, a, a brother or a sister? And the whole family was like, yes. And mom was like, no, 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 hard no. I thought they were kidding. I, there's no way I was getting another dog. But we got Bruce and we got him uh, at a time in my life where I was kind of going through a bit of a hard time. And he and I bonded and he is like my best friend and I love him so much. And he's my dog. He follows me everywhere. Like I'm definitely his favorite and I call him my emotional support dog. But then the kid, the family reminds me, mom, you didn't want Bruce. You didn't want him. And they'll whisper in his ear, mom didn't want you. Oh, (laughs) you know what? That sounds a lot like our house. (laughs) Yeah. And, And I love having two dogs. Like I didn't like having one dog, but for some reason, the two of them watching them play and everything, it's just, I will never not have a dog. I love them. And it's so weird that I didn't grow up with pets. See, my wife was the same way and I fought her for 20 years to okay. get a dog and then we got Bosco uh-huh. and Bosco is her love uh-huh. this dog is one spoiled dog he knew he knew who he needed to to, to warm up to right like he didn't have to worry about me and my daughter uh, Bosco warmed up to mom and now Bosco is the man he he gets the treats he gets belly them. rubs he's, he's living a good spoiled life here Well, they say that people that have dogs, it increases your happiness, lowers anxiety, lowers stress, and there's a lot of benefits to having a dog, you know? Oh. And I see that a lot, so. Oh, yeah. And and he's there. Like, he, when things don't feel right, 
Brasco comes, sits on your lap, and he's yeah. good. They know. They know. They know. And I never believed that until I had a dog. I thought dog owners were kind of crazy. <laughs> Bruh. They are. No. <laughs> <laughs> now I am crazy, yeah. <laughs> All right. Education. Education. Well, I'm running for school board, and so obviously – Uh, I do believe education is one of the most important things in the world. It's the thing that makes everything possible, right? Teachers make every profession possible. You want to be an astronaut, you need a teacher to teach you. And teachers change the world. And I, uh, I went recently to the Wisconsin Association of School Boards conference in January. And almost every speaker there had a very powerful story about a teacher that changed their lives. And I always say that a great icebreaker is tell us about a teacher that changed your life. Because when you ask somebody that question, everybody has a teacher that changed their life. So I love that. I'm going to use that. I'm stealing that. It's Stephanie. true. It's yeah. no, it's, it's so definitely true. true. So who was your teacher? Um, well, I don't know. There's like a couple probably. Yeah. There's, there's a few that are, that are dancing in my head. And see, here's the thing. I had experiences where some of the teachers that might have changed my life might not actually have been for the good. And it wasn't that they were bad educators. It was the scenario of how I went to school Mm -hmm. because I went to predominantly all white schools that didn't have any diversity. And some of those teachers were not, they weren't ready. Mm. They weren't ready. And so those were things that changed morphed who I was um what I will say is there's some college professors in my case there was some college professors who truly changed the trajectory of my life um one in particular named uh, J.C. Smith uh, a sociology professor back in the day um god bless R.I.P. um he he gave me a chance and he believed in me and I'm not even sure I was deserving at the time. Yeah. And so um, I, I, you're right. There's always an educator mm-hmm. somewhere in, in, in the world where that changes your, your trajectory. So yeah, that's I agree. powerful. Yeah. And what that's ab- why I support teachers. What about you? What about me? Yeah. Um, I have two. One of them is um, he made me a better writer, Stanley Mikulak, He in college. He had this, um, he would take your papers and if he could take, if he could cut more than 10 words that you didn't need off of your paper, you got an F and he would make you write it again. Oh yeah. He was hardcore and I was so scared of him, but he made me such a better writer and he just, um, you know, he was very intent on improving our writing skills, which writing is a skill that you need forever. And I, and yeah, he made me a better writer. My second professor was my French professor who encouraged me to study abroad. And she had me go to this program that was full immersion and which meant I took all my courses in French and I went to the French university and all this stuff. And I got there and I was not prepared. She sent me to this program that I almost failed out of. And I was so mad at her because I I really barely passed, right? So I got back from my semester abroad and I went to her and I said, I just want to tell you that I was so mad at you my first month there. And I had no business being over there. I was not prepared. My language was, skills were not whatever. I had to sit outside and I had to look in the dictionary before I could even say hello to them. And she said, yes, but you just told me all of that in French. You couldn't do that before you left. And I said, oh my gosh, you're right. She said, I, I knew it would be a struggle for you, but I knew you could do it. And that is one of the things that changed my life completely. The, my love of travel, my love of the language, um, yeah, Yedervaso. Oh. <laughs> That's her name. That's her Madame name. Madame Yedervaso. Yeah. All right. And I'm still in touch with her, by the way. Yes? Yes, yeah. You know what? And that just made me think of another amazing educator. Um, another amazing educator that, that changed the trajectory is um, Dr. Gibson. She has since retired um, in my grad school studies. Um, and she gave me the confidence to believe that I was worthy of being in grad school. That's awesome. And, and 
gave me some skills that I didn't that I didn't have prior, you mm-hmm. know, because undergrad doesn't necessarily you can maneuver through undergrad and it doesn't always prep you for grad level. Right. Um, and she she let me know that I was, I was meant to be there. I was supposed to be there. And, and awesome. Yeah, that's, you know, and it's a mindset, right? Yep. Sometimes you sometimes it's not what they teach you as an actual content. It's what they teach you or believe in you as a human. Yeah, exactly. And um, and it takes a special human to want to be an educator. It sure does. Yeah. Mm hmm. Powerful. Okay. Um, Kosh Hidden Gems. This is your opportunity to tell us um, something that you think is special in Oshkosh that maybe others don't know about or maybe they do and they just don't know some particular thing about it that makes it special. Okay. Uh, I have two. The first is NAMI, located downtown. And NAMI stands for the National Alliance of Mental Health Resources or something. Uh, I, can't, I can't get the acronym quite right. But, uh, you know, as a result of the pandemic, I think we're all struggling with our mental fitness. I like to say not mental health, mental fitness. We need to stay mentally fit. And NAMI offers a lot of classes that are free for mental health services, support groups, teen support groups. And a lot of people don't know what they are. They just know the acronym NAMI and they they know that it's just, you know, a mental health facility or something, but they offer a lot of resources for our community. And I'm a huge fan. They are a great organization. Yes, they are. And now that the pandemic is apparently over, knock on wood, uh, they have a lot of their support groups coming up, and especially support groups for teens, too, which I think is a great need in our community. And they're free. They're free. So the other one is Community for Hope. Community for Hope is an organization that is um, focuses on preventing suicide. And they have free training called QPR training, and it's question, persuade, and refer. They do QPR trainings in our schools and in our community. Again, free trainings. And yet very important. And, you know, I I feel like we don't talk enough about some of these resources. So I was happy to have the opportunity to bring them up in the hidden gems. When I saw that, I'm like, yes, these are two hidden gems that are so valuable. And people don't know that they're out there sometimes. Yes. And um, I think suicide is one of those things like um, we it's such a hard topic, but it's such a needed conversation Mm -hmm. because I think that there it crosses more people's minds than we want to admit. Correct. Correct. And that's the QPR training is the first thing is question. Are you feeling suicidal? Ask that really tough question. Directly. Directly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. All right. I love those gems. Thank you. All right. So what's the cash need? Um, you know, I kind of have two answers on this one. I, I feel like the Kosh needs a little self-esteem. I think that sometimes our community is too hard on ourselves. We compare ourselves to like, uh. yeah, <laughs> we're not as good as Appleton. We don't have what Nina has. Nina got the, and I, I feel like, you know what? We're, we've got a lot going on. We really do. And it's amazing here. All our resources and the lake and you know, I mean, you re- there's really nothing that, in my opinion, that we don't have that other communities are, are better than us, right? But I feel like Oshkosh is sometimes our own worst enemy. And, you know, we say, oh, we're kind of like the middle child. We're not this. We're not as good as that. But you know what? We are. So uh, I manage a page called Positively Oshkosh where I, on Facebook where I try to, Ooh. yeah, I try to pump up Oshkosh. And it wasn't my idea. The idea was born from Citizens for a Strong Oshkosh, which I used to be a part of. We we haven't met very much lately, but it still exists as an organization. But yeah, just talking about all the good things that are happening in Oshkosh, we don't always do a good job of that. So that was my one thing. And my serious thing is that I think we need a mental health facility. Um, And that's because Again, one of the things I'm very passionate about is mental health. And I feel like 
if we have, if, if you are feeling suicidal, um, there's only one place to go and that's the hospital and the hospital, you can go there and they will stabilize you. They won't treat you. And, uh, I recently learned that places like Rogers up in Appleton, that is a place where you can go and, and get treatment right. has a six week waiting list. Oh yeah. Six weeks. If you're, su- uh, if you're suicidal, you can't wait six weeks. No. Right. You, so you, you can't wait six days. No. And maybe not even six hours. Right. And so I would really like to see us have some sort of mental health facility where you could go if you're not feeling safe. Um, they have one in Appleton called Iris Place, and it only takes eight people. But you can check in there and stay as long as you want, and it's free. Um, you know, I know the logistics of getting something like that. I'm a big dreamer, right? Like, I don't know if we can't get a homeless shelter going, right? Like, how can I get a mental health facility? But I like dreaming. So it's out there. No, Hey, look, um, what's the cost you need? The point is, is let's, let's give it out there to the, to the world, to the listeners. Um, you know, and I, I'm a firm believer if you if you put it out there, sometimes it magically starts coming to fruition because I know when Kosh listeners hear what you're saying, there's others that are going to go, yes. I hope that's so. That's exactly what we need. I hope so. <clears throat> and I do think we're in this weird mental health space. I was just having this conversation with someone <clears throat> that, um, you know, the way that we're operating professionally is so different, right? And so, like, uh, I like to think back to the times when during a week um, at max, you might have like 10 meetings, which would be one in the morning, one in the afternoon, right? Now you might have 10 meetings in one day back to back with no breaks in between because they're all virtual and you're just jumping and jumping and the meetings are different. So now meetings are heavily data driven because there's a bunch of uh, PowerPoint presentations and, you know, it feels different, and it, and I even feel like it's a bit overwhelming, right? Like, oh, yeah. we got to slow this down right. um, a bit because right. that's just a lot. Um, just to be able to process and take all of those things in. Um, but I know it's, the change was good in one way, but mentally I don't think we ramped up to it well. Right, yeah. And I think there's effects, you know, and I can't tell you, I don't know about you, but screen time at this point has, has some exhaustion to it. Oh yeah. Big time. Absolutely. I agree. So I, I think there's a whole nother mental health thing on, um, that needs to be addressed in that. Yep. And, and studies are showing that we all have what they're calling like brain fog from the pandemic. You know, we didn't interact as much as we normally do with people. So we've lost like a little bit of vocabulary. We've lost a little bit of like, uh, you know, our social norms. We're all kind of awkward going, you know, we're not used to being in crowds anymore and stuff. So, and there's a brain fog. No, that's true. I've found that um, I'm losing more words now that could just be age, y'all. So, <laughs> but, but, um, no, let's blame the pandemic. Yeah, we're going to blame the <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, I'm not getting old. I am getting more youthful. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, on to the naughty slash heroes corner. This is your opportunity to put somebody in the naughty or the heroes corner. It's not necessarily a person. It could be an organization. It could be a thing. So what do you have for us? I have Gordon Hintz. He recently came out and said that he's not running again after holding that seat for 16 years. And I don't know if you know Gordon, but yes, I, I, I know Gordon. Um, there has been an air guitar uh, oh, situation yeah. or two uh, yeah. that may have happened. I, I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> well, I just I think he's a fantastic human being, and um, you know I'm I'm happy that he's going to be able to spend more time with his family. But what he's done for our community is just extraordinary, and he's going to be missed. Whoever he whoever takes his seat has very big shoes to fill. And, you know, it, 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 it's a grind being in public service for that long. So he is my hero. No doubt. Um, I just think he did, did a good job representing this, his district. 
He did. And his um, certain things he did for outreach. So like um, when my daughter graduated from high school, I remember a letter coming. I remember another one when she graduated from college. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember him walking up and down the block, handing out flyers instead of mailing things. Yep. And so he legit was in the neighborhood. Yep, he and, went every parade. And any time, I felt like if you had time to talk, he had time to talk. And he made, he at least took the time to say hello and say what up. And he, I don't know, he's got some amazing memory, but he always remembers details he about does. you. He does, yeah. It's very personalized. Yeah, and, and he's very real, so very I'm going to miss him. Yeah. Well, there are big shoes to fill. Yes, there are. So I'm eager to see um, who's, who might step up. Um, okay, that was awesome. Um, now, <laughs> that's right. I'm not cutting this down. I, I enjoy this for some reason. I like it too. Yeah. Don't cut that. Keep that. Keep that. All right. So now it is time for the topic of the week. So Stephanie, um, what's our topic of the week? The end of the pandemic. I think it, I think this is it. I think it's over. I think, uh, you know, the last time that we said no more masks, I went around my house and I grabbed every mask and I threw it away. <laughs> did was, you really? Yes, I did. You, you were done. <laughs> I was done. I was so sick of masks, you know? And ironically, now I kind of miss them. I got one with, uh, you know, my, my logo for my campaign on it. The day, and it arrived the day after we lifted the mask mandate, of course. But I, I, I wanted to talk about it because I don't know if anybody else is feeling like I'm feeling, which is it seemed like it just ended quite abruptly. Like one day, you know, I mean, we've been waiting for this day, right? But it just seemed we went from, you know, mask mandates to mask optional and now like in one week everything is open again and it's over and and we're just back to normal yeah i don't i I have a different view on it okay um i don't think it's over i think we're in an endemic instead of a pandemic and i just think um it will be around in some kind of capacity just not in the same way where there's this urgency urgency about it right but I think we're going to for a long time still be dealing with it there's still um you know and and there's all there was always choices about how you how much how 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 you went about your safety precautions right and if you decided to um vax or not um but I I you know I just know it's not over over because there's still people suffering. Of course, yeah. Um, but I know what you mean. Yeah, it like just it, seems weird. But it, it was like, I think, and it's kind of what they said, you know, um, with this last variant, the way that it was so contagious and the way it was just burning through. Yeah. Um, which kind of feels like everybody kind of may have caught it in some type of way and right. uh, and built some type of immunity. Immunity, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Um, it still makes me wonder. It makes me wonder too. Is this really the end? And and you know what happens next? But to put it in context, a couple of weeks ago, you know, I got the invitation for the League of Women Voters candidate forum, and they said it's going to be closed to the public, and we're going to be masked. And then just two days ago, I got a note saying it's open to the public, and we're not masking. And I, I'm just like, wow, a lot can happen in two weeks, right? We were headed there. Yeah, and the numbers the numbers were changing, um, but in the same sense, I I I don't want to over celebrate because I still worry about those who are in the situation of um, having uh, compromised immune systems. Agree. I want to be thoughtful. I agree, hundred percent. Yep. And you know, it's not that no one's going to have it, right? You know, it's just like I think like we all have built some immunity in some sort of way. And we're entering into a new phase. Right. And I'm curious to see what that looks like. And I'm also curious to see, you know, 10, 20 years from now, how history portrays our reaction to this pandemic. And yes. did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? I don't know. Only time will tell. Um, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, 
the portrayal of what the pandemic was. And the more curious thing is I'm more curious about um, uh, what's going to be the political portrayal of it. Exactly. Same. Uh, Yeah. Um, Because, you know, I I just think um, we could have did it better. I think so, too. You know, I agree. You know, there's just there's just some things I feel like uh, we definitely could have did this better. I I think this was this this was our test as Americans or or as people here in this country because um, it wasn't about citizenry. This was about humanity, and this was our opportunity where when the when the tough gets going, the going gets tough, and we we were supposed to come together. Mm-hmm. And come together as just people and, and get on the same page and, right. and overcome. Right. We had the technology. We were going to overcome. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's my thought process. What I agree. Else, what else? Um, what else about the end that you feel? Well, part of me is really happy. um traveling i've really i really miss traveling and i'm excited to you know i i um it's so weird how how things happen but i had the opportunity to go to paris in 2019 and it was literally the month before notre dame burned down and my friends and i were like oh how lucky we are how lucky we are and uh and then Pretty soon after that, you know, we 2020 happened and we were like, wow, we were so lucky to take that trip in 2019. We had no idea. And I haven't really been anywhere since then. So I'm looking forward to doing some more travel because I love traveling. Oh, me too. I, and not that I was a big traveler before, but there's there's places now, you know, that kind of. I, I feel like this was one of those situations like the pandemic made you say, when we get done with this, yes, my my bucket list got yes. a little more serious. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I need to do this. Right. Yeah. Same. So I'm looking forward to traveling. And then, you know, my husband and I both have families that um, one in Philadelphia and mine are in Colorado. And we didn't get to see them very much either. And, you know, we were really scared about visiting them because uh, especially as parents, they are they have a lot of health issues. And I, when we saw them one summer, we didn't hug them and we wore masks and we just tried to be as safe as possible. So I'm looking forward to going out there and giving them big hugs and and spending quality time with them and not worrying as much about getting them sick. Agreed. I, I, I have the, I have kind of the same situation and um, it'll be good to like go visit your parents and not the same way or at least mm-hmm. hopefully not worried the same way right yeah mm-hmm. give more hugs give without more hug. afraid of killing people right right <laughs> right that's that was exhausting during that time wasn't it it really was but it also like it kept you away from some family but then it brought you together closer with family and it's ways true. too We became creative on how we communicate. I never FaceTimed before, but now I prefer FaceTiming to to a regular phone call because you can see the person and you can see their expressions. And, you know, it's I don't think I would have started using FaceTime as much. I don't know. I do. I I feel you on the FaceTime thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, just being home together. Oh, my gosh. You know, because everybody was kind of like, what was there to do? Oh, so I love more family meals. I, I, I absolutely loved the first few weeks of the lockdown, to be honest, my family, we had so much fun and we just played games. There was nothing to happen, nothing going on. And I had all my babies in their nest, you know, and that's kind of rare when you have three teenagers and everything It was right before my son was going to college and I loved it, but you know, I think I'm I'm the minority in that for some people. But <laughs> no, I think a lot of people actually talk about that. Like, you have to find the balance in it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's always um, goods and bad, and there is a large bad because of the dangers, but there was this good because of the precautions that needed to be taken. And I do think that whole family time um, being yeah. kind of reinstituted in a way, right? That's a huge reward. Yeah. And I remember we always, we rent our house out for EAA 
And we always have a long list of things, house projects we have to get done before EAA. And it was, you know, March or April. And I was like, we're done with all our EAA projects. This is going to be amazing, you know? And then EAA was canceled because that was at the point where you're like, they'll never cancel EAA. Yeah, right. they did. Yeah, yeah. they did. <laughs> uh, and I agree with you. You know, the we just got rid of our mask um, mandate in, at my at my job uh, last week, last week, Friday. And, you know, our thing was, is, um, you know, you couldn't, you didn't have to wear it in your office, but if you left your office, you had to, you know, have a mask on. And I find myself all this week, like every time I got ready to walk out of my office, I almost missed putting it on. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about that, uh, the comfort of anonymity. I know, right? <laughs> like, I, I know. don't know. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> like, I don't know. And they were warm. And uh, they were warm. I, yes. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm a fully, fully give it up. I might, I might have to wear it here and here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm I'm going to, especially outside. Yeah. It does keep you warm. That was a benefit. There was a benefit. And you never had to worry about having anything in your teeth. <laughs> 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 Bruh. That's a new one. That's a new one. Yeah. That's a new one. Okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add about the end of the pandemic? No. I'm happy it's over. Or maybe. Knock on wood, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Oh, that was the wrong button. Okay. This happens. <laughs> Is this the shout out? No, oh. no, no, not yet. We're we're gonna start winding now. Okay. Yeah. And this is the point of the show where I just um we thank. We thank our listeners and we say thank you very much for taking the time to listen. Um, once again, we are a work in progress. Um, we're always trying to improve, try to get better. Um, thank you for your continued support. Uh, I'm hoping that I can get some of the Kosh listeners out there to submit some reviews. Um, we're trying to raise our profile a little bit. We want to get it. We want to get our outreach out there a little better. Um, I've been trying to uh, institute a new segment called Ask the Kosh. And in that, I would like some Kosh listeners, or anyone for that matter of fact, to call us and ask us something so we can talk about it. Cool. And so uh, that phone number for Ask the Kosh is 920-385-9298. Once again, 920-385-9298. It is a Google voicemail. So take time, ask us something. I'm just curious. I want to see what happens. I actually think that'll be a really good opportunity to have a conversation. Um, once again, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekosh at gmail.com. If you'd like to be a guest, uh, reach out. Um, if you've got anything you heard on the show that you're curious about or you got you want a critique or a question, reach out. And my last thing is we got a website. And so um, the Kosh podcast.com. Once again, that is the Kosh podcast.com. And on there, you can find all of the episodes. Um, and. I know I said and last time, right? Anyway, <laughs> this is what happens. Um, things just pop in the mind and you got to spit it out. We do have available Kosh t-shirts and hats. Yes, they finally came through. I started this process a long time ago. Um, I, I, I ran into somebody who was able to fulfill the orders and they did it. They look amazing. They're pretty cool. And so if you are interested in them, Please don't hesitate to reach out. They are $20 each. Okay. So um, now, now is time for, you know, my favorite time of the show. You know what that is, Stephanie? No, what? That is shout out time. I love shout out time because shout out, you know, we got to recognize some people. That is super important. So who are your shout outs? 
Well, I'm going to shout out you, Timber, to begin with, because this is a really fun experience and I appreciate the opportunity. And I think that this podcast is amazing. And so if anybody out there is listening, I highly recommend that you come on and have a conversation with Timber because it's a great experience. And thank you for the opportunity. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Can I, and I, my other shout out I was going to say was my fellow board member, Liz Salaji, who was on the Kosh most recently. And I loved listening to getting to know her because, you know, school board members, we're not really allowed to talk and socialize outside of meetings. I mean, we can, but we're always worried about walking quorums and, right. and starting rumors that we're talking, et cetera, et cetera. So I learned a lot about her and she did a great job. So that's my second shout out. Okay. That was a great episode. It was a great episode. Right. Yeah. And it's nice to know the people who are holding those offices on a different and from a different perspective, like who they legitimately are. Yeah, I learned a lot about her. So awesome. Um, my shout outs. Um, I'd like to send a shout out to uh, Mayor Woodford and his wife, uh, Hillary. Uh, we went to a herd game last night and it was fabulous. So shout out to them for coming down here to the cash and hanging out, um, going to the herd game, going to Ruby Owl, eating some grub. It was a good, good time. Amazing. Um, want to send a shout out to my girl Amber out there who just had a baby, baby Zoe. Yes, girl, you know, them be some beautiful children you be having. So, um, so big shout out to her health and love to uh, Amber. Um, shout out to my fraternity brothers and Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, they are here in town today. We are handling some fraternity business things. And I always get excited when the bros are in town. So I get to see them and hang out with them a little bit. So uh, after I wrap up here, I'm going to go. Um, I, here's the, the thing. I got to actually get dressed dress dress like I got to put on a sports coat and a tie kind of dress but it's still still just to be able to see my fellow uh brethren over there in Alpha Phi Alpha I'm excited to see you guys so big big shout out to y'all all all right so this is the final part parting words of wisdom all right Stephanie what do you got be kind Kindness disarms everything. And if you don't know what else to do, be kind. Can't argue with that. No. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I had a great time. I appreciate it. All right. To the listeners out there, you know the cash. <laughs>